Hey, everybody. Um, I am here today again with Catherine Weber, who Catherine joined me, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and we did a, uh, I guess we did an interview about um, parenting challenges after domestic abuse. And so we're, this is actually kind of like part two. Um, today, we're going to talk about emo emotional regulation with our kids. And so, um, Catherine, just um, remind everyone who you are, your, uh, the name of your business, and what you do. Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine Weber, and I'm a owner and educational consultant um, at Rising Scholars Consulting. I have uh, about 15 years in special education working with kids um, on an academic and behavioral level. Um, so, uh, this is my, uh, way of, uh, giving back to a community that I care about, um, and, uh, tying my professional life into that as well. There you go. All right. So we were going to talk about emotional regulation today. And I, the first thing that comes to my mind is how I was when I was coming out of domestic abuse, I needed this for myself. Not to mention what my children were going through. My kids were, um, they had seen a lot. They had been through a lot. And yes. so we all had trouble with emotional regulation. So um, we're just going to get started and we're going to go through some, um, just let me ask you some questions, if you will. Yeah. Right. First of all, just tell us what emotional regulation is. So emotional regulation is your ability to regulate and control your own emotions. And it's not something that any of us are born with. It's a skill that we have to learn as we grow. And that's something that is started in your childhood all the way through to where we are now as adults. And nobody during that time period is ever going to be the expert or uh, perfect at regulating their emotions or helping somebody else regulate their emotions. It's always going to be a work in progress to, um, to, go, so, to overcome those challenges. Yeah, and I guess we just have extra challenges because of what we've been through or, and mm -hmm. our children do yeah. as well. So. Yeah. And when you think about it from like a, perspective of when these things start, the first uh, things that come to my mind because of the age of my own children are toddler tantrums. So <laughs> I have a three and four year old where that is my life right now. <laughs> um, so we're, we're trying to teach our children um, and ourselves as, um, as we are, uh, as we're growing and um, maturing uh, to deal with things, because if not, they're going to lead to issues like anger or aggression or depression and anxiety. Yeah. Well, when we talk about temper tantrums and toddlers, I think a lot of those of us who have lived through d uh, domestic abuse kind of think, well, that's kind of how our abuser was. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> real problems with emotional regulation, right? Yes, that is very true. <laughs> So, um, so uh, clearly many of the children that we work with um, have seen, uh, experienced or witnessed uh, trauma and abuse. So how do we teach em emotional regulation to these children um, when they're struggling so much? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the environment and our surroundings is going to play a huge role in that. And we have to teach our children to self-regulate um, which is the hardest thing to do because what you're doing is you're refraining uh, from acting in an impulsive or a detrimental manner um, to yourself or to others. Um, and like you said, that's something that these children have most likely grown up witnessing um, and being able to not have that role model, that role model from their father or whoever it may have been um, is really difficult in um, changing your own behaviors. So we have to do that for them in a way. We have to show um, the right ways to regulate our own emotions. And in other ways too, we don't have to do it ourselves, but these are things that we need to um, be able to teach our kids. Right. Um, a lot, and a lot of kids with um, issues like ADHD, for instance, struggle with this because of their impulsivity, because they just want to act out um, and they have difficulty controlling that reaction. 
um, in their behavior. Yeah. Well, I mean, as you're talking about this, I also think that, again, I have to go back to, to me when I was coming mm -hmm. out and um, because I know the struggle I had. I, I grew up in a family where we didn't have emotional outbursts, but I sure learned how to have emotional outbursts. Um, it says in Proverbs, um, don't associate with an angry man lest you find your, learn his ways and find yourself ensnared, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, I don't know how long I'd been out. It hadn't been that long. And I remember one day my kids were, my girls were in the back seat just bickering and screaming and fussing. And, and I slammed on brakes, just like my ex-husband would have done. Well, he probably would have, would have put his fist through the windshield. <laughs> he did that a couple of times. We lost, we lost um, a pretty, couple of really nice yeah. windshields. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I turned around and I was just screaming at them at the top of my lungs because that was what I had learned. Then yeah. I get back on the road and I feel like the Holy Spirit said, really? Are you going to leave it like that? And so, and I may have told the story in our last one. I don't know, but I just, it, it's still to this day, it was just a dramatic thing for me to realize yeah. how far I had gone. Mm -hmm. And we also know that trauma does that to us. We become more um, reactive. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to just yeah. all of a sudden, you mm -hmm. know, go back to even what we were before we got into the abusive uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something like I've had to learn to do myself as a parent through this is give myself grace for those reactions because we're not going to, and that's what I want mothers that we're speaking to right now to understand, we are going to make mistakes. We are going to show our children poor examples of how to regulate our emotions. And it's human, it's, yeah. it's, human, er it's human error and um, it's overcoming the things that we've been through ourselves. So we need to learn to give ourselves grace and teach our, chil our children the same. Well, at, at least my, my good example was that I um, turned around and I apologized to him. Yeah, that's good. And, and so there are things that we can do. So basically what you're saying is that we kind of need to be working on our own trauma. We need to learn yeah. even grounding techniques or things yes. to help ourselves calm down. And yeah. so, you know, there are other things that we can do to help mm -hmm. our children. Yeah, like some things I can think of. Um, off the top of my head or noticing um, the feelings in your body, like how your body's reacting to a certain situation or naming the feeling, like giving it an actual name. Um, I feel blank when this is happening. Teaching our children to use language and recognizing um, those feelings in our body and then the coping skills we can give them to overcome those things. Yeah. So you, um, you have some tools that you mentioned that you had written down for me, and I know you yeah. probably uh, talked a little bit about that now, but let's go more into detail. Yeah, I'll go into more detail on that. So um, some things that come to mind uh, as far as tools and um, regulating our emotions can be mindfulness, um, meditation, um, self-care, um, these are things like you said we talk about for ourselves, even in like even in our support groups and God's peace. Um, and these don't have to be huge things like going out and I don't know getting your nails done or something as an adult. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's little things that we can do for ourselves to healthily deal with um, the negative emotions that we're feeling um, and replacing those behaviors with better ones. There are also really good um, like apps out there um, for uh, child-based meditations, um, child uh, children-based um, Bible readings um, and apps that I've used with my own children as well. Um, so those are all great ideas to, um, to help. Um, the other thing is if we don't um, teach these things and um, help our children regulate, then this can lead to other more difficult problems in the long run. Um, some of the things uh, that come to mind just as a professional or I've dealt with um, working with children who have opposition, oppositional defiant disorder, um, anxiety, depression. I mean, we see it in schools, not just in therapy offices. Right. Well, and I believe that a lot of those diagnoses are given to people who've been traumatized. If you've ever yeah. read 
read the book, The Body Keeps the Score. He says, that's how people who've been traumatized um, will present so often. But the thing is yeah. that they've been traumatized and they've never healed. So the more that you can do to help your children heal. And I'm, I want to talk about the meditation from my Christian Bible based standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, I know I had PTSD. I had all the signs um, mm -hmm. back then. We didn't really have the diagnosis complex PTSD yet. Yeah. But okay. One thing, you know, as you, if you read my book, it talks about how I would post scripture all, and I put them, the scriptures all over the walls of my house. Yeah, I've done that. Yes, and go when I would be upset, I would go over there and just start meditating, like reading that scripture aloud, praying mm -hmm. it to God over and over and over again mm -hmm. until it sunk in because I felt mm -hmm. like it was just here and I needed to get it here. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Yeah. And the other thing I found very powerful and I believe is powerful is music. Um, I was just thinking that. <laughs> and singing for me it was worship music it yeah, really exactly. helped to make god bigger than my problems yeah. and so there is there is meditation from a christian standpoint mm -hmm. we think that everybody thinks well you've got to do this this eastern way but there mm -hmm. um and a lot of people are ha have issues with that but meditation yeah. is very biblical scripture mm -hmm. tells us to meditate on scripture it doesn't even tell us to study it just says yeah. meditate so yeah. we are um, and when we look at the way they meditate even if you go i went to israel several years ago and they meditate they will have a scripture that they will meditate and they're just they're doing this they're rocking yeah. to it <laughs> and yeah. saying it over and over and over again mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, I think it's to get it down here. It's to get it past our mind because our logic cannot reach the side of our brain or the part of our brain that has been traumatized. And yeah. it's a whole brain activity like meditation, yeah. singing, music. Um, and, you know, there and, are and even and even showing like talking to our children about the things that. Um, yeah. People, that people have overcome and that how it builds. um how it builds your tolerance and resiliency in yourself mm -hmm. um, and the good things that can come from it. Right. And telling them Bible stories and ch telling them, you know, God, can, I love um, the story of Joseph. I think we, mm -hmm. I've talked about that yeah, before, we're but for children, letting them know Genesis 50, 20, one of my favorite passages, you meant this for evil. So whoever was hurting you may mm -hmm. have meant it for evil, but then Joseph says, but God meant it for good. And we know yeah. that God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And that's us. Yeah. We love him. And we want to, you know, we have surrendered our lives to him. God promises to use whatever we go through for good. And so that's, um, it, I think very, giving our kids hope because I think a lot of times anger, frustration, despair, and the anxiety and those things that you've been talking about, yeah. um, they're fed be be because we don't have hope and we start believing things that are untrue. Like mm -hmm. there's no hope. This yeah. is, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. Nothing good will ever come out of this. So mm -hmm. countering the things we've come to believe with truth is part of that meditation. It's true. And I think a lot of parents don't realize that, um, this can start so early. Like I, I've seen it in my own four-year-old um, and it can go all the way up to somebody as old as an, as an adult, as grown as an adult. Um, so it really does, just like with domestic violence, there is no discrimination, like no age, no type that this can impact. Right. Absolutely. So what are the benefits associated with, um, our ch children learning healthy emotional regulation techniques. Um, yeah, like I said, if they're, if as I said before, if they're able um, to learn these things, we develop that um, tolerance and resiliency um, to the adversity that we that we and our children have faced before, um, and it and it can be and it can be. Um, difficult to overcome those things because of labels or diagnoses. Um, but if we put in the work, if they put in the work, if we do it as a team and do it together, um, we can learn how to regulate all of that better and handle the past traumas that we still um, dwell on and remember and handle dilemmas that may come up in the future. Um, because that's always going to happen as well. Even with the women that we work with, um, 
the co-parenting is okay. is a roller coaster. Yeah. And if we can if we can just imagine what sometimes our children witness and feel in those situations, um, because I, don't, I mean it doesn't matter how young they are or how old they are, they're going to feed off of off of that. So. Yeah. When you were speaking of that, it just triggered my thought that mm -hmm. um, we have a retreat coming up in May and we actually have a trauma therapist um, and one who works with children coming to talk about um, parenting traumatized children. So mm -hmm. we will have a more, it's right. we get more in depth. Um, but for now, hold us over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could probably, you mentioned that you might have some resources that you could recommend mm -hmm. for those. Yeah. Who uh, those who are struggling with this right now. Yeah, some just some resources and some tips um, for those who are having um, difficulty themselves or with their children. Um, I always the first thing I always encourage is collaboration with trusted family and friends, teachers, um, school counselors, therapists. You have to remember that we do not have to do this alone, even though even though we may feel like a burden to others. Um, and we have to show our children that they don't have to do this alone either, that there is a plethora of people who love us and care for us, and God being the almighty one who does as m most importantly um, to help us to help us through this, so that we don't have to go at it alone. Um, one resource that I have used in the past professionally um, with kids is um, a book that's called Playing with Anxiety, Casey's Guide for Teens and Kids, and it's geared more towards um, preteens and teenagers, um, and it's a fictional story. It's a really easy read. Um, it's a fictional story about a girl named Casey and how she deals um, with her anxiety, how she gives it a name, how she understands the science behind it and what affects her anxiety, and then how she regulates and deals with it. And I think it speaks really well to kids that age. Um, but at the same time, you also have to make sure that your child's ready for it because I have worked with kids sometimes on a professional level where they have not been ready for it. And I've had to put a stop to it. Um, we have to make sure that they are comfortable and at the point where they feel like they can work through the trauma that they have faced. Mm -hmm. So I recommend doing that not um, just by yourself with your child, but um, talking to like your child's therapist if they're involved in therapy um, and uh, asking them for resources as well. So again, just not doing it alone. Right. And I think it's really important that you get a trauma who, a trauma, a therapist who yeah. truly understands trauma, especially domestic abuse or even child abuse, if your kids have experienced that. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Deborah Wingfield has a book called um, Eyes Wide Open Co Parenting with a Control Freak Parent. Mm -hmm. And in her book, she has uh, questions you should ask therapists and attorneys and things like that so as you're going through the process you have a checklist of things that yep. you can ask because we what I have learned being in this I ha I've got my master's in biblical counseling well and I've also worked with multitudes of therapists over you know our, in our area and even across the nation at this point but what we've learned in my experience with you know the hundreds of survivors that I've worked with is that there are so many therapists and counselors who don't understand yes. and they can actually make things worse. So That's very true. And even I've even had ones who were trauma certified. So what we want to do mm -hmm. is we really want to do our homework to make sure we get the right kind of therapist. Yes. And I, and even things that I've been through myself with my own children, if the therapist is not um, equipped to handle certain things, I appreciate that honesty. Um, in them because then they can direct you to somebody who can um, because not every therapist is skilled or experienced in um, in these right. issues yeah that's true yeah. well uh, Catherine I do appreciate your input again and um, is there a way that they can reach out to you if they have any questions yes definitely I have a website I have a Facebook page um, it's my company is called rising scholars consulting um, again, my name is Catherine Weber. Um, uh, my email address is Catherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N 
at risingscholarsconsulting.com. Um, so anytime um, you want to reach out through the website or email or Facebook page um, or ask, ask Joy for my information as well, if you didn't get a chance to write this down, um, I'd be happy to help and uh, provide uh, free consultations, which I do, and um, significant discounts uh, to uh, survivors. Yeah. So are you going to come to our retreat in May? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. keep that in mind. She'll be there yes. at the retreat if you want to talk to her in person. <laughs> yep, I'll be there. <laughs> so yeah, and if you're interested in that, just go to call mm -hmm. to peace .org and yeah. on events and women's mm -hmm. retreat. We have Leslie Vernick yeah. coming to join us and she'll be the main speaker, but we have all sorts of amazing breakout sessions where we're planning we'll have those um up and on the website in the next week yeah. though but we do have one you know uh and and, and if women want to reach out i you don't have to be i'm local to raleigh but you don't have to be um i do plenty of work virtually especially in these covid times so right. yeah well most people are you're yeah. right yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much, Catherine. Um, You're we'll probably for do this again. I think we had a couple yeah. more that we've talked about doing. Yeah, definitely. So we will see you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.